Uh, Dr. Lear, I want to go to you. You talked about removing 16 objects from people. I think in my reading and preparation that was called implantation, and I might have that wrong. Is that the right word? That is absolutely correct. Oh, good. Okay, hey. I'm learning something here. Okay, then when you, and it also is related to people who have been implanted with something, and you described that it was a uh, different kind of material that didn't meet the usual, which means to me it came from somewhere else. Is that correct? That's correct. I submitted uh, to the committee a set of scientific documents uh, that shows some of the latest work and uh, findings that we find in the material science of these objects. But I want to point out, too, that to my shock, absolute shock, was a paper that was uh, given to me through the Freedom of Information Act in which it describes all my work in the OSTP in the White House given to President Obama at the time he was trying to raise money for the medical care bill. And the individual that wrote the article stated that if my work was not correct, or the work done by my team was not correct, and that it was secret work that was done by some governmental agency, this also should be released to the public because it would save billions of dollars in health care. And what is the implication? Break that down for me, please. Well, if we took just the fact that there is no inflammatory response of these objects and no rejection of these objects, you can see that you could take anything that we use medically, a pin, a screw, a nail, a heart, a kidney, any organ, place it into the body, the body would not reject it, and the individual would not have to be on very expensive uh, anti-rejection medication for the rest of their lives. Now, that has nothing to do at all with the material science associated with these objects that we have found here. Well, this is a very advanced nanotechnology. These are nanotechnological devices in which nanocarbon tubes, either single or double wall, I won't go into the whole explanation, but they can be elongated and weaved into carbon nanofibers, carbon nanostrands, and they end in crystalline structures, which are what we call orthorhombic, which are regular rectangular structures. And we have to remember that in the early days when I was a child, and radio, and you got a crystal set with a battery and an earphone, and you were able to get a radio station. That was a marvel. So here's a very, very advanced nano, when I say nanotechnological, I'm talking about things that are on a level of the size of an atom using the principal elements of certain materials, putting them together in such a way so that you're actually broadcasting or switching what we perceive as a radio wave, which may not be a radio wave. It could be scalar technology, which when reaches our electromagnetic spectrum, is converted to a radio wave harmonic, which I know is a little bit complex. But it is sending information to somebody. So somebody out there is listening to something going on in our bodies. Now, we know that even John Glenn, when he went into space originally, complained on public television that he had to swallow implants because this was vital information needed on the physiology of the body to know what was going on in space. Okay. And so, therefore, your conclusion, you and your team, as it relates to health care, as it relates to our country, as it relates to our budget, and to our phenomenon topic we've been talking about today. What do you conclude? Well, I conclude that if there was funding, at least funding, or uh, open-mindedness from the scientific community, which there is not, because they also pray to hire masters. They don't want to lose their jobs. They have families to feed. They don't want to look at this stuff in the way that we've looked at it for the benefit of mankind. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.